Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me on my Otter Mage Designs YouTube channel for another quick emote prefix update tutorial. My name's Jade, and I'm a writer, illustrator, and Twitch affiliate streamer. I stream art on most weekdays, and on the last Tuesday and Thursday of the month, I have subscriber and follower appreciation streams, where I sketch your art requests for free. You can find me on Twitch as Jade the Otter Mage, and if you ever need emotes, please keep me in mind. Today, I'm going to be highlighting the qualifications for how to unlock your ability to change your emote prefix on Twitch. Big thank you to WalkerFan for commenting on my prior video, which shows you the steps for updating your emote prefix. WalkerFan poses the question, I don't have the update prefix dropdown menu on mine. How can I do it without this? And that is a fantastic question. In my prior video, I was primarily focused on showing you how to do the updates, but I didn't talk much about what the qualifications are for updating your emote prefix. So today, we're going to cover that a bit more thoroughly. First, for anyone new to Twitch, you might be wondering why someone might want to change their emote prefix at all. Many of us do not like our assigned emote prefixes because though they're based on our username, they're not always aesthetically pleasing, don't always make sense, and aren't necessarily intuitive. For example, I changed my name from Bento Studios to Jade the Otter Mage. When I did this, Twitch offered to let me change my emote prefix from Bentos, spelled B-E-N-T-O-S, to something that better matched my new username. Unfortunately, because I'm not partnered, I can't change it to whatever I want and I have no choice but to use Twitch's generated emote prefix, which is, which is Jade TH13. This prefix is generated based on the first characters of my new username, just like Bento's was generated from the first characters of my old username, which was Bento Studios. However, because there are so many Jade the something or others, it added numbers to the end to make sure that my emote prefix was differentiated enough from the others. And quite frankly, no one wants to type that out. If the numbers are awful, I don't like it, it's not aesthetically pleasing, so I chose to keep Bento's instead of updating it because it's way cuter and way easier to use. Some people, however, may have a channel name that is perfect and will not have this issue and may never encounter the issue with their emote prefix. Others may want to change their name, but might have no idea what to change it to so that they can guarantee a cool prefix for their brand. However, if you want to change your emote prefix, you can do this, but there are steps and qualifications that must be taken and met first. This video is about the qualifications. I feel like Twitch's tutorials that are available through their site, though clear, could have done a bit of a better job doing this. I say that because if I were going to Google how to change my emote prefix on Twitch simply because I was unhappy with how it looked, their article that I linked to in the last video and that's also linked below this video is the one that comes up. But this article has nothing to do with changing your name based on aesthetics. This article is about how to change your emote prefix on Twitch following a name change. What it does not explicitly state is that this is the only way to trigger the event of being allowed to update your emote prefix. You must change your username to change your emote prefix if you are a Twitch affiliate. The article states that as an affiliate, if you have ever undergone a username change, you may undergo a one-time emote prefix change to match your new username. This prefix is randomly generated based on your new username, and you are eligible to do this once for every username change. So in summary, you must be an affiliate and you must have undergone a username change. In the FAQ below, there's a question asking, how often can I update my prefix as an affiliate? Which I think is a fantastic question because what if we start using a name and then we realize, oh my gosh, this other name is way better, I wanna change it, but now I'm kind of stuck. This question is answered with, as an affiliate, 
you will be able to update your emote prefix once every time you change your username. You may change your username once every 60 days. So in summary, you can change your username every 60 days and that will prompt you to change your emote prefix. However, if you've changed your username within the past 60 days and you also changed your emote prefix, you will not be eligible to change your emote prefix again until that 60 day window has expired. And at that point, you would still have to change your channel name again to prompt the eligibility again, which is quite frankly, very frustrating. <laughs> if we scroll back up and we look at how to change your emote prefix, the first bullet point reads, head to your dashboard and click the hamburger icon to open the menu, click preferences, then affiliate, under subscriptions, click emotes. None of this is correct. Okay, none of that is right. It goes on to say, if you're eligible to update your emote prefix, you will be able to click the update prefix dropdown. The first two sentences are outdated and Twitch really needs to update them. Definitely check out my prior video if you want to see the actual steps for updating your emote prefix. The third sentence is a bit confusing because the second half reads, you will be able to click the update prefix dropdown. And that implies that the dropdown is always there, but maybe it gets grayed out or it has an information bubble or something beside it if you aren't actually eligible to make the name change or the emote prefix change. But that isn't the case according to WalkerFan, or at least I think that's not the case based on what I'm looking at on my official Twitch channel, what I can see on a new Twitch channel that I made, what this article we're looking at says, and what WalkerFan is experiencing. Therefore, it's safe to assume that if you have not triggered the eligibility event by changing your name, then you are not going to see the drop-down menu. So in summary, and what I think this article should more explicitly state is the following. There are two qualifications for changing your emote prefix on Twitch for non-partners. First, you must be an affiliate. This goes without saying, but I think it should be included in any guides in case you have new users who are rolling in and who are really excited about getting emotes after making a brand new Twitch account. There's absolutely no reason to hide that qualification away. Second, you must change your username on Twitch to trigger the eligibility event and that under no circumstances can you change your emote prefix as an affiliate without changing your username first. There should also be a sub bullet explaining that you can only do this once every 60 days, just for added clarification so that someone doesn't change their username to see what the newly suggested emote prefix might be because they only read the first half of this article and then decide that they hate that too, but they think that they can immediately change it to something else and are woefully surprised whenever they go to attempt that. Having that in an FAQ is great, but also putting it in the qualification section near the top would provide further clarity a lot sooner. And I mean, how many of us really read full articles? We really should, but how many of us really do? And just to further summarize, if the dropdown does not appear for you, then there could be three factors at play, each with different outcomes should you want to change your emote prefix. First, if you have not changed your name yet, then the dropdown is not going to appear. Therefore, to trigger the eligibility event that makes the dropdown appear, you will need to change your username. The second scenario is where you changed your name in the past 60 days and you also updated your emote prefix. In this scenario, you will need to wait out that 60 day window and then change your name again to trigger the eligibility event. And finally, you changed your name as well as your emote prefix longer than 60 days ago. 
In this last scenario, you will need to change your name again to trigger the eligibility event and to prompt the drop-down menu to appear. If you're like me and you changed your username a long time ago, but you never updated your emote prefix, I think it is safe to assume that it will still be sitting there waiting on you to update your emote prefix many years to come because I changed mine two years ago from the date I made this video and it is still sitting there waiting for me to update it. There may be other considerations as well, but these were the three that came to mind after I read a large number of Twitch articles and skimmed through their FAQs. And remember, if you cannot view your channel points or your emotes in the creator dashboards, viewer rewards, menu dropdown, then you are not yet affiliated with Twitch, and that is requirement number one to accessing emotes. You must be affiliated. So, I hope this video answered the questions you have about triggering the eligibility event for updating your emote prefix on Twitch. I'm sorry for the length, but I really wanted to be thorough, and I felt that I just wasn't thorough enough in my last video on highlighting the requirements for gaining this eligibility to change your emote prefix, even though it I was really good about showing the steps for doing it. I hope that I've done a better job of it this time. If y'all have any other questions about something in this video, or if you have questions about anything else related to like emotes, Twitch, art, or even the challenges of changing your username or rebranding your business, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you again to Walker Fan for the question and thank you to Monte as well for the question that started us down this road. I'm always happy to answer your questions here on YouTube and making tutorials is a huge passion of mine and I really wish I had a lot more time to spend on it. Thank you to everyone for the support. If you're enjoying my content and are interested in supporting me further so that I can make more tutorials and make them more frequently, please check out my Patreon, which is designed to help me create better content more frequently here on YouTube. I really do love creating tutorials and your support on Patreon and your support on Twitch and help enable me to do that. Thank you all so much. I hope you have an utterly fantastic rest of your day.